So centering myself, centering all of us. As we arrive in this place today, <laughs> oh, we laugh at the silliness of technology and the spontaneity of what we end up doing together. But we come now to a place in the service where we really wholeheartedly turn towards God. I ask if you didn't already put your feet on the floor for the centering music, that you do so now, and that you come into this confession that we're about to share, unless you have your hands full with the technology by which you're joining us, with your hands open, in a posture of both giving and receiving. Throughout Lent, we will be saying confession together. And so we're going to start with the Psalm 51 excerpts from that Psalm this morning, which we're going to put up on the screen for you. And I would ask, this will be exciting, now that I've asked you to have your open hands uh, to unmute. if you would, so that we can do this in unison, please. I would love to hear as many of your voices as possible. And then return your hands to that open posture. A confession with Psalm 51, verses 1, 6, 8 through 12, and 15, 17. Have mercy, mercy on me, O oh God, God, according to your steadfast love. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret. Teach me wisdom. that you have me a clean heart, God. Put a new and right spirit in you will not despise. The way we're making this work is we're muting my computer as much as possible. So I can't hear all of you right now unless I unmute myself and don't talk. So it'll be a bit of a give and take today to make this all work. We are moving from the confession to the prayers of the people. So what I'm going to ask is that I'm going to tell you I'm, I'm seeking prayers of concern. I'm not going to echo them when you say them. I'm going to summarize them at the end of everyone's sharing because if I talk while you guys, I'm listening to you all, we're going to get an echo. So right now, we're going to start with any prayers that the sanctuary has by way of concern, and then I'm going to open it up to Zoom. So are there prayers right now from the sanctuary of concern that you want to share out loud? Okay, then we are moving to Zoom. Please unmute yourselves and go ahead and speak if you have a prayer request. Unmute yourself and go ahead. If you have a prayer request, I'm not gonna call on you. Reverend Gail. Go ahead, Kevin. All right, I'd like to pray for Reverend Gail and Chris and Jennifer and Pastor Nathan. Also for Max for his finances and for um for John who struggles with alcoholism and prayer for me. That's it. 
Other prayers? For the people living in Texas and all they've gone through this past week with uh, the freezing temperatures and lack of water and frozen pipes, etc. Other prayers. So I'm going to add some prayers of concern that were raised at the eight o'clock this morning. Um, a couple people named specific friends in Texas who are living without power or having now flooding because of frozen pipes and other serious conditions. We are praying for Eileen as she works her way back to sobriety and for all people who have been living with the stresses of this past year, which has sometimes challenged hard won places that we have achieved such as sobriety. People have returned to ways of comforting or numbing themselves or coping that are not always the healthiest ways. And so for the journey that all of us are taking to go back to healthier, more balanced, more sustainable practices for self-care and care of others, we pray. And Eileen is upheld in this prayer. For people living with cancer, particularly Phaedra with her migraines that are a result of her treatment as she goes through treatment for breast cancer, and for Martha undergoing the last of her radiation for breast cancer. We think also of Richard. We think of Sasha recovering from surgery that addressed cancer. We think of many in our community, Claire, and Cheryl, and so many others, some named, some unnamed, who are in different parts of this journey. We celebrate Cheryl, Cheryl's beautiful haircut. <laughs> um, and we give thanks for the growth of new cells. Uh, even in the midst of our concerns, we, we give thanks. And so we ask for prayers for those that bear the burden of leadership in this world, who in the midst of all of these, the multitude of challenges that have pressed humanity in the past 12 months, people have taken up the roles of becoming servant leaders. There are people among us that choose to be leaders, are called to be leaders, and do it because they are called to service for others. And we ask for strength, resilience, creativity, balance for those who choose to be these kinds of leaders in the world. We pray for Scamp, for whatever may come next on her journey. We pray for Amber. We pray for people recovering from all kinds of challenges to their body. And as we ever do, we ask that you would put your hands on a part of the body that you want to pray for today, for yourself or someone else. And we're going to name all the parts of the body. And I see Kate and Kala there, and I bet you Kala could demonstrate for us all the parts of the body if you feel like being sort of center of attention, Kala. Maybe you'll do it with me. So we're going to spotlight Kala, and we're going to follow Kala as she helps lead us in the body prayer. We're going to start with the top of our heads. We're going to pray for our skulls and our brains and the mind within the brain, for the health of the brain, for those living with epilepsy or Alzheimer's or memory conditions, for those dealing with mental health, suicidality, depression, altered cognition, and all kinds of diagnoses. We're praying for our ears. We're praying for our eyes. We're praying for our noses, our mouth, our lips, our teeth, our throats. We're praying for our spines and the nerves that run from the brain down through the spine and connect our body to our brain. We are praying for our hearts and our lungs 
and our breasts and our chests and our stomachs and our liver and our kidney and our pancreas. We're praying for our GI tract from our mouth all the way down to our colon, for all the parts that connect it, including the stomach. We're praying for our hips and our shoulders and our elbows and our wrists and our knees and our ankles and our feet and our hands. And as we pray for these, the parts of our body and those that need love and attention for the parts of the body, the lymphatic system and the skin itself as well, we ask for your presence, O oh God, as a healing force, a healing energy, a healing love, to restore and renew what can be knit together, to offer comfort and dignity and peace for those coming to the end of this mortal journey, and that you will be present not with just the individuals for whom we pray, but also for the communities that are the wider body of Christ also broken and hurting right now and so in need of your presence. Thank you, Kala and Kate. And now, if you want to unmute and name any celebrations, they would be very welcome. Celebrations or gratitudes to lift us up. I'll oh, go. Oh, go yeah, ahead. You wait, and Jen's got to. Um, just we celebrated my mom's birthday yesterday with my sister Sandy came down, and we got to go to the Air Force Museum and have a nice lunch, and um, my daughter was there too. So it's just a beautiful day to be able to celebrate her and be together as a family. Wendy. Wendy. No. Kevin? I'm grateful for miracles. I'm grateful for the sunshine. And I'm grateful that God gives us what we need. Bob? Yeah, I, uh, I had my first COVID shot, a vaccine scheduled for April the 8th, which was the earliest I could get. And yesterday afternoon, I got a, a text from Walgreens to come and get my first shot, which was clear out of the blue. <laughs> Deanna's birthday is on Tuesday. <laughs> that happened to us too. We got a call from the day center and they said, come on down. <laughs> so we did. How did you get on their list? Ray goes to the day center. Okay, I'm gonna mute all of you just so that I can add some other celebrations that were raised up um, in the realm of birthdays. Uh, Tish's mom will be celebrating her 91st birthday tomorrow and she said her mom is actually 30 in mom years. And Claire Long said that her mom Claire Senior was celebrated at her care facility with a lifetime achievement award at the age of 94 yesterday and they felt that it was a wonderful way to celebrate her life while she is still with everyone and she can appreciate the look at her life and all that she has achieved so many birthdays including apparently deanna i heard her mom outing her for her birthday so if you all want to unmute i'm not going to mute myself because I will end up creating an echo but you won't go ahead and let's do happy birthday out loud happy birthday, happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you
interesting that they don't get to sing and they're not sure they, that may be a good thing. It may be not a good thing. They don't know. But happy birthday to everybody that we just serenaded. And I think that I think the joy of just smiling together is a wonderful prayer up to God by itself of our gratitude for all things that we can name for which we are grateful, including first and second vaccinations, people with new jobs and people with new homes. Um, there's a few of those announcements that have come through and they are all wonderful and much appreciated. And now you all can unmute. I am again going to stay muted and we're gonna put up the Lord's Prayer and we're gonna say it together, but you all are leading it together. Our Father, Beautifully done. Thank you. <laughs> now, returning to scripture, I'm going to read for you all of the Beatitudes, but we will be focusing on Matthew 5, 1 through 3. So first, the fullness of the Beatitudes. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And now we focus on Matthew 5, verses 1 through 3 of the Beatitudes, and we review this again. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And finally, I want to read to you the same passage as it is shown in the message, which is another, it's really an interpretation as opposed to a direct translation. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with them. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Five o'clock on Friday, we wrestled with this passage. It has, it, it's so few words and yet such big ideas and it's confusing, even though it sounds straightforward. The Beatitudes have been used sometimes as a prescription. Sometimes people say, almost like a recipe. If you do A and then you add B, you'll get C. So if you're this, 
and you do this, you'll get this. I think we should start with the Beatitudes by saying that when we prayed this morning, and I'm going to ask you again to place your hands openly in a position of receiving and giving, that it is precisely this language that opens the Beatitudes. Every single line says blessed. In the original Aramaic, it wasn't even really a verb in the way we understand verbs. It was a statement of a condition that already existed. The language of the Beatitudes in the languages that it had been translated from use a performative version of the language that doesn't say, well, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. It says this exists. Blessedness is already yours. For those poor in spirit, theirs is already the kingdom of heaven. Blessedness is not something that we can earn. That doesn't mean that we aren't called to be ethical people who do our best to be our best selves whenever we can. But we know that as people, we will always fall short of perfection. We're not even called to perfection. We can't get to perfection. Perfection is the enemy of the good. We acknowledge that we begin and we are a people who are messy and imperfect and often broken. So there's nothing that we could do. We can't ever make ourselves good enough or do enough of the right things to earn what is being offered in these Beatitudes. It is a gift, and you've probably heard this language a lot of times when we think about grace and mercy and forgiveness, but blessedness is here to remind us that when we have our hands open, it is because we come before God, if we come before God with clenched fists, with our hands closed, holding on to the things we think that we're bringing to God, we're fooling ourselves. God loves us and God has given us gifts and indeed we will put them to work. But when we are putting them to work, when our gifts, the ones that we receive are being offered, our hands are still open. When our hands are like this, when our lives are like this, when our minds are clenched and we think we're holding on to what it is that we need to bring to God, we're closing ourselves up both from what is being offered to us and what we are called to offer to others because we have received this blessing. So let us begin Lent. Let us begin the study of the Beatitudes with this same form of opening ourselves. The first of these Beatitudes is really truly a confession. Those who are poor in spirit are not poor spirited. It doesn't mean that you are lacking in resilience or hope, but it's talking about people that are resilient and hopeful in spite of everything. And we're going to dig into that in just a moment. But let us acknowledge first that those who are poor in spirit, those who have basically said, I'm not in control. And two examples for us today, the digging in. People in Texas who, because of something way beyond their control, freezing temperatures for which they were not prepared, they've experienced icy roads and catastrophic car accidents. They've experienced loss of power, freezing temperatures within their homes, frozen pipes that are bursting. There are people that can't warm themselves, can't feed themselves. They didn't choose this condition. In point of fact, many people are in the risk of losing everything or have already lost almost everything. Think of somebody like the woman for whom we pray today who has struggled so hard for her sobriety, and this year was too much. 
and she lost that ground. And she is starting over at the beginning of the 12 steps. The very first of the 12 steps is to say, I am not in control. This is too much for me. I have been fooling myself with my hands closed, thinking that I could hold on and white knuckle it and I would get through it myself. And that doesn't always work. And for us as people of faith who are following in the way, it is not the way to white knuckle it through by yourself. You're not proving that you're stronger and that God has given you everything you need by doing that. You are cutting yourself off from the very resources that can make your life bigger and better by opening your hands, by saying here, this is my life. This is my heart. This is everything, and it is broken, and it is a mess, and it's beyond me. I can't fix it myself. I need help. I need more than just me in order to get through this. Whether you're a person in Texas or a woman who is starting over to reclaim her sobriety or any of us, in any of the ways that we have been holding on and white knuckling it. The first step towards hope is to acknowledge where you are, the circumstances where you stand. Does, God doesn't meet you in some pie in the sky nirvana. God shows up here in the middle of your mess. That's why we follow in the way of an embodied God, Christ. Christ didn't ride in on a chariot. Christ walked around a dusty road and sat with the poorest of people, including us. Blessedness is something that we receive, and we receive it in part because we confess, because we open ourselves to God and simply say, I am yours. Matthew talks about the poor in spirit, not the poor. In Luke, it says, blessed are the poor. Matthew says poor in spirit. It's going deeper and further. And we need to be very, very careful not to valorize poverty itself. Poverty is not a gift. To be impoverished is not a blessing. We are not wishing on, on anyone or saying that we should continue any type of system or situation that holds people back or down. In point of fact, others who probably are turning themselves over to God are those that experience the most grinding form of poverty. People that we have met in our own nation when we have gone into the city or we have served at the way station or if we have traveled to other places as Meg has done to Honduras or sometimes now even to Zimbabwe, but it's here, it's in our country too, that kind of poverty. But even within those conditions, people may be poor in materials and yet it is possible to not be without hope. And strangely, when Matthew says poor in spirit, the poor in spirit is actually a sense of becoming so willing to say, I am yours. I'm not in control. I can't white knuckle it through this myself that you are literally landing in a place where the only thing left for you is hope. Hope is something where you begin by acknowledging where you are, setting yourself a goal, finding a path, and then having a sense of empowerment. People who work the 12 steps are not without power, but they begin by relinquishing power first. People 
that are acknowledged in the Beatitudes too are people who are not without agency or hope or resilience or the capacity to rise up again. But they begin by saying, my life, however I am experiencing, I could be the wealthiest person in the world, but I am not in control of what is going on in my life. I could be the most poor person in the world, and I am not in control of what's going on in my life. I'm a person just diagnosed with cancer, and I'm not in control of my life. I am a person who is struggling for my mental health or my sobriety. I am a person whose home whose environment has been devastated by this climate change, whether I'm in Texas or in California recovering from fire or in another place recovering from earthquakes and landslides and floods. All of us at some time or another have had to throw up our hands and say, I'm not in control. That does not mean you are a person without hope but it does mean that you are a person who has understood what it means to be poor in spirit because you have opened yourselves up and you have said, I need help. And for people of faith within the Beatitudes, the help is literally turning our lives over to love. We talked about the kingdom of God, and if the verb is saying that the kingdom of God is not a future promise of like paradise or heaven, the kingdom of heaven is here on earth, what is it? And are we going to tell the people in Texas, oh, you're blessed because you're poor in spirit? We're not telling somebody that you're blessed because you're experiencing a terrible condition. We are merely saying that God is present in that condition and that God's presence becomes real because we are not alone. And when we are not alone, sometimes it is another person in your life or an entire community in your life or another community outside of your community that holds hope when you cannot. For the people in Texas, it may be people in other parts of the country who are their hope or their neighbors who were more prepared than they were and have enough to share, or the agencies that are getting things back up online and others that responded with emergency supplies, the frontline workers who've been doing this throughout the pandemic and long before. Hope begins by naming where we are, setting a goal and having a path and having agency and the kingdom of heaven, if it is hope, lives in us. Ours is the kingdom of heaven. And if we are poor in spirit and we're saying, I can't do this by myself, the whole point is we are not to do it by ourselves. But if we, the poor in spirit, who have turned our lives over to God, if ours is the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is here, then we belong to each other and ours is the hope. Ours is the response to where we are. Ours is the response to each other when someone is telling you, I need help. It doesn't matter how they got there. It matters that they showed up and they have opened themselves to you, to God, to love, to community, to resources, and said, I need help. Christ doesn't pick the pretty people or the powerful people or the most polished and airbrushed among us to keep company with. Christ has given the kingdom of heaven into the messiest, worst broken people there are and every one of us has been that person at some time but it belongs to us the start of this lenten journey the chance to fling ourselves into the love and the mercy of this relationship is to open ourselves to confess who we are and where we are and begin by acknowledging that love is available to us because we have said yes to love. And to say yes to love is to open your hands. 
And when you open your hands to open your heart and your mind and give all of it over to God and each other and begin the journey of Lent together, it will be a journey through the Beatitudes. It will be a journey through brokenness. It will be a journey through the 12 steps turned into eight steps. And it is a journey that brings you to hope, to joy, and to each other. Because the kingdom of heaven is ours and it's right here among us right now. The first blessing is to give ourselves over. We are the dispossessed, and we are offering ourselves to be possessed, to belong to love. May we be poor in spirit as we receive the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. At this time in the service, we invite you to turn towards the commitment that you have made to our community and our world through this church, through your faithful giving. You can go to jxncc.org. You can put an offering in an envelope. You can drop cash in the church or in the little basket out front. However you are able to give and you have chosen to give and you've made a covenant to give, we appreciate it. We honor it. And we truly do need it because this is how we be the church. Faithfully support the kingdom of God, which is all of us taking care of each other. going to sing together a song called Seek Ye First. Seek Ye First, the kingdom of God. Um, Alan's going to play the music. We're going to put the words up. You can stay muted. And we're going to pray you know this well enough because you're all sort of on your own to sing it. So here we go. And we're humming if you're in the sanctuary. Close out this morning with the benediction, which I think you also all know. And Chris will play both a um, song leader and the music for this and put up the words for us. And then Alan will close us out with a postlude. And you obviously, as usual, are welcome to stay and chat afterwards. Before we start the benediction, let me just say, um, Watch for both announcements about upcoming racial justice programs. Tony DeLuca is going to lead us in a conversation. And we're going, there's a film screening. And then we have a mindfulness workshop with Anjali Rose and another film screening that is an interfaith one. These are upcoming Lenten and Black History Month activities that we'll be offering. And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Hey.